I've had quite a few people ask about making a log longer or what you could do if you've got logs that are not long enough to, to go the full length of the wall. And on this cabin, we've had to do a lot of splices. And that's what I'll be doing today. I've got a pair of logs out there on the horses that'll go on seawall and they will have a splice in it to make it the, the full length. Right there above that scaffold board, there's a splice and all you see is two pegs and a vertical line. I know some people have done half lap and anchor it from the top side, but I like this with the mortise and tenon and I'll show you how I lay those out. But there's a splice there and there's a splice right there. We'll go out here to the saw horses and I'll show you how I do that. I have my marks on here. This first mark right here where my finger is, is 22-3. I actually need 22-2, which comes to this line right here. I'll make this cut first, and this will be my actual cut where my thumb is. I've got it marked down here, and I'll take my chainsaw, and I'll cut that off. I'm giving myself an extra inch here. I'll cut the mortise out, and then I'll come back and cut this inch off because I'll be beveling this back a little bit so that I'm just, when I make my silky passes, it'll actually be on this line right here. I'm coming down two inches and four and a half inches off the inside face. So that will give me a two and a half inch tenon. And I'll take my level and I'll level this across here. My log is leveled up when I'm doing all of this. Anytime I'm doing a layout, I make sure that I have my log level on the sawhorses. I know you can't see that bubble, but I can. Let's make a mark across there. And I'll drop down and get the one at four and a half. And I mark it. Now when I turn this log to where it's up, I'll transfer these marks here on back to get ready for my, my cuts. I'll cut on the inside of these two lines on the mortise. Okay, I've got this laid out on the bottom side of the log. And what I've done, I've just laid my square up up there where it's touching the side really good and I'm marking it two and four and a half. And I've measured back from my actual cut line, which will be right here, eight and a half inches. That gives me a little bit of play room on the end of that tenon when I start making these shoulder passes here to get a fit that gives my tenon plenty of room. I don't have to worry about it hanging up. But I'll take my chainsaw and I'll rip up against the line here and the line here. I've got it laid out on the end. I did that with the level. And I'll just rip this out and I'll flip the log and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll take my little carving bar and I'll cut right through here with this line that's right here. I'll just cut on this side of that line and I can take this piece out in one big, one big chunk. When I cut this here, I won't cut all the way down. I'll just cut part of the way and then flip it and do the same thing from, from here back. log over and do the same thing from this side down here.
Okay, now I can take my little carving bar and I'll just plunge cut square in a little over halfway to cut this piece out. Now I can come back and cut this little bit of a undercut here and cut on across. I won't go right up against the line. I'll leave myself just a little bit. I can take my hand plane and clean it up just a little bit. So that's got that part of it cut out. I can stand it up, and if I have to do some cleaning out in here, I can do it with it standing up a lot easier. Okay, I've got all that cut out. Now the last thing I'll do is to check on the inside if there's any bumps in here. I really don't want that. It's better to have this slightly concave than to have a bump out here because it really make it difficult to get the tenon to go down in there. So I've got just a little bit that I need just to clean out there on both sides so I'll do that with a chainsaw and then I'll check it with my square. I think that'll work. Okay I've got the tenon laid out and I lay it out very similar to the way I lay out the mortise. Now these tenons will be eight inches long. I've got my shoulder line right here for the tenon. I don't have it laid out on the, on the bottom side yet, but I have the, the top side laid out. Whichever way the log is, that's what I'll, I'll cut while it's in that position. And there again, the same as I did on the, the mortise, I'll leave myself a little bit of wood just proud of that line so that I can make my, my silky pass to fit the shoulders here. I did the same thing on the tenon that I did on the mortise. I just put my square flush on the inside and I marked two and four and a half. And I also did the same thing. I, I came down two and four and a half on the end of the log and used my level while the log was still level on the horses. And I, I marked that. And then the end mark here, I just connected back and I'll also put the little uh, undercut here. So I'm just touching right here and here when I set it on the wall and I can make my, my little silky passes down through there. So I'm ready now to cut this. And when you cut these, make sure you're cutting on the right side of the line because we want to keep our, our two and a half inch uh, width in the tenon. Now these tenons are eight inches long. If you remember, I, Cut the mortise about eight and a half inches deep and that gives me just a little bit of slack here on the end where the the end of the tenon would not be bumping the back of the mortise you know in case when you're you're cutting that out with the uh the little carving bar that you don't get everything just perfect you don't have to worry about any anything holding you up right here 
to pull everything together. Okay, we've rolled the log over. We've got the bottom side up, and I've got my tenon laid out with my little undercut lines to go by. Once I get these cut all the way through, we'll lay the log down flat, and I'll make these cuts right here and get rid of this uh, waste wood. I'll take my plane, and I'm just kind of getting a good clean line there. This is somewhat similar to uh, cleaning up a notch. I just take a good sharp chisel. Now, when I cut these, I didn't come... Well, I got pretty close to the line there. I stay away from the line, or try to, just a little bit. And then I'll come back and pare all this down to where it's completely flat. So when you slide the tenon into the mortise, it, it's not bound. You really don't want to have to drive them in very much because we've got to be able to pull this all together. So I'm just paring down to my line. Keeping your tools sharp sure makes it makes it easier on your work. Then I can take my little Crayola, my yellow one, and I can take my chainsaw and brush this down just a little bit. Then I can take my slick and just start paring this down. Make it nice and smooth. So this part of the tenon is done. We'll just flip the log over and do the same thing and this will be ready to set. See, we have a couple two before screwed on. The shorter one is for the first log, and that gives David something to just kind of ease that log right up too. And the taller one will be the side where the mortise is, and that way we can raise it up over the top of that tenon and slip it down in there. one person that will get it Oh, 
I got it. Get ready for a drop. Alrighty. I'll go down there and I'll tap the, the splice together. Perfect. Well, that's got a wall up on round 10. Easy, easy set. Everything went together really, really smooth. <laughs>